are back for another edition of Cues with the Buttes. Cues with the Buttes. Bump, 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 bump. Ooh, theme Cues song. with the Buttes. Ooh. Yeah. I've, I'm trying to just really market myself as a person that can do everything. So if you guys uh, want some beatboxing. Never forget the time when Jesse made an entire rap in the middle of quarantine when yeah. we were all a little bit delusional. I I never forgot that. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag I love to be creative. So if anybody's looking for me to make a rap for them or whatever, I'm happy to do so. That's in another life, I uh, <laughs> could do that. So um, again, our YouTube exclusive here on Questions with the Buttes that we take every week when we're recording our new episode. Uh, we want to give a special segment to our YouTube channel and, and answer these questions for you guys. So without further ado, Producer Fred, what do we got for questions this week? Or cues? Uh, we do? actually have four questions, which is kind of nice. I like having four questions. I like questions. Um, first one from the Minnesota Hockey Journal. If you guys, great publication. Great publication. If only one of us wrote for it. If you guys if were only. to play slash have played hockey, which position would you play and why? Who wants to go first? I got a good answer for this. I, I'm a defenseman. <laughs> I'm a defenseman. And like every, even when I played like soccer and basketball where you're kind of playing every position, defense. Like I have just a very defensive set mind. I don't really look to go score the goal. I stop the goal. They used to call me like the brick wall in lacrosse. Um, <laughs> they, <laughs> pretty good solid little defenseman so that's all i got i mean nothing humble too brag. crazy humble brag humble brag i mean I, david levake said he wrote about me in the star tribune that was that good yeah so. no big deal fred so let's not forget <laughs> um <laughs> mine i would be a fourth line bench player on the jv team and that is about as much info as i can provide because I would not be on varsity, that's for sure. So my position would be all but irrelevant. I wouldn't even be like the important fourth line player. I would be like the one that they're just giving ice time to because they feel bad. Um, so I don't, yeah, probably if I had to pick an actual position, maybe like winger, I feel like that's like the least, they do the least amount of work. Like Setterman, you know, you have to take the face offs. Defenders, yeah. you're constantly doing something. I'm not athletic enough to be a goaltender, so I'm I would probably to think have of to like say winger. Which mighty duck you would be? Because I feel like you're a mighty duck somewhere in that hodgepodge of like, <laughs> like are you right. Averman? I was Averman much. Like maybe you're just. You guys have to remember, I played soccer for. 13 years of my life and I never made it on to varsity. I played JV through my senior year of high school. So I, my athletic ability is tragic and this question is a little offensive. I'm not going to lie because we all know I wouldn't have been a successful hockey player. So oh, that's right. what I have to say about that. RIP bringing up Alexis's non-athletic <laughs> yeah, thanks career. Thanks for that guys. <laughs> See, I would be the guy, I would be the backup goalie on the bench that just dances to all the intermission. Oh, music. that's what I should have you said. Know, I, see you be, as, I see you as a me. backup goalie. That's yeah, what I, would I totally see. just so, be like casually just like pumping up the crowd and like that's yeah. it. I'm I'm happy to carry this team if if that's what I'm doing. I feel like I'm carrying the athletic capability of this team. Um, Just saying, I'm proud to do. When that. we did floor hockey with the Minnesota Wild during the summers, they put me in goalie once. And I gave up 27 goals. So Fred, I would that, definitely, like, I'm not, just, I'm just, it's just, I'm not even like a sieve. I just, I'm just a busted pipe. Just a busted yeah, pipe letting it all out. Amazing. Good old Swiss cheese yeah. producer yeah. Fred. <laughs> Next <laughs> question. Alicia Freeman. What are your thoughts on the newly announced NWHL 2021 season playoffs? Yeah, so we talked about this in the episode for this week a little bit as well. I'm just going to read a quick um, snippet of the press release for people who don't know like what that uh, the playoffs are going to look like yet. Um, so the teams are arriving in late January. They're going to play five games, so one against each of the teams in the league, followed by a playoff round that will determine the four teams advancing to the Isabel Cup semifinals. The single-game semifinals will feature the top-seeded team against the fourth-place team, with the team ranked second and third facing each other, the winners of the semifinals will advance to the Isabel Cup final on Friday, February 5th. So it is, you know, kind of like a little bracket system for the playoffs. I do like that they're doing, um, you know, not everyone is going to make the playoffs. I like that because it gives you something to play for, um, which previously, it, you know, it wasn't like that with the NWHL. Everyone kind of had a shot. You just get thrown into this bracket and you, you play until you get to the cup final. So I like that there's some incentive um, behind that, that not everyone's going to make it. Um, obviously, they got to make it quick because it's a con season so they don't want to drag it out too long which is unfortunate because everyone knows playoff hockey is the best hockey so that stinks yeah. that we don't get that many <laughs> playoff games uh really it's only going to be three 
Um, but I like it. It is what it is. You know, we have to understand that there is going to be changes made to get the season off without a hitch. Um, so it's going to be a very, very quick season there with teams arriving late January and the season ending at the beginning of February. So really only a couple weeks. Um, but I like it. They did what they had to do. I think it makes sense. And like I said, I like the fact that it gives teams incentive uh, to get into that playoff. So I don't have much to add. I, I would agree though. I think it's, it's a great thing. I mean, again, the kind of joyous thing I find about COVID and, and people kind of trying new things is you just get to do just that. You get to try yeah. new things and see how it shakes out. So um, I'm not against it. I think having teams not make it is always an okay yeah. thing too. I'm not a fan of the participation trophy. So, yeah. um, you know, well, you got to earn your spot. Normally for the NWHL, the playoffs aren't super extensive either because there's not that many teams. So there's only yeah. so much they can right. do to make a playoffs happen. Um, obviously, you're not going to have a million games and they don't do, I think they did the very first season, they did a, a playoff series, um, but they don't do series like in the NHL. So it's just a one game and then you advance or you don't advance. So um, it's not too far off from what we normally see. It's just a little bit more condensed. So I like it. I think they did a good, did a good job organizing it. It's going to make for some fun hockey. Next question. Producer Next Craig. question. Doug Munson. Do you think Marco Rossi has a real shot at making the team? Yes. Um, I won't even really hesitate on that. I think you had, you asked me a couple months ago, I was kind of up in the air, um, but kind of just going back even to when they drafted him and the conversation mm -hmm. that you had, this kid carries so much confidence for being such a kid, right? He has this confidence, so he's going to come into camp. Um, and I think the Wild could use him. He has that skill mm -hmm. set that they were going after. I think he's going to be a great asset to this team. Um, I'd actually be more surprised if he didn't make the opening night roster with the Minnesota Wild. So I'm going to say, yeah, let's see what the kids got. Yeah, I agree with Jesse. Um, not to echo too much of what she said, but when we did our reaction video to the draft, um, I kind of said the same thing because I one of you guys were saying, you know, do you think we do we think he's going to make the team? And A, he wants to. He said that he is ready to play if they will have him. Um, and B, like Jesse said, I think there is a spot for him to really do something on this team. So I think if he can prove in camp that he has that skill set to fit in right now, I don't see why they would hesitate to put him on the team. I mean, what do the Wild have to lose? They're, they are trying to kind of not rebuild, but I would say more of a regroup reshape. is what they're trying to do, a reshape, yeah. Um, so they're throwing on their spanks. They're trying to squeeze every thing in and you know get, get a little different shape to, to the season so I would say that if it looks like he is ready I think they're going to put him on the team so and it sounds like he is ready as well so yes I think there's a very high chance that he is on this team come next season right one disclaimer I would say I mean I yeah I don't think they will rush him into no, it right no. if he doesn't appear ready at camp um, there's no reason to rush mm -hmm. that. I, I think it's just deciding where is he going to get a better development, right? Is he going to yep. develop down in Iowa? Where do you send him then? If you're not going to put him up on the roster with the big guys, what do you do with him? Um, so I think you just make that call at camp. But I, from everything that I've heard and kind of the little bit that I've seen of him from different reels, um, he looks like he really could help the team, which is, which is all that they're looking we for. We need it. Point. Yeah, exactly. So let's go. Good luck, Rossi. <laughs> Next question. And this is from State of Hoppy. What's up, State of Hoppy? What up, State of Hoppy? Favorite hockey player with zero ties to Minnesota or the Minnesota Wild? This is so hard for me because I only like Minnesota players. This is so uh, easy for me. Is it current or like all time? It doesn't say anything. I mean, okay. I know your answer, Alexis. It's pretty I know obvious. Yeah. Answer too. Mr. I would go. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Just say it. Just say his Just name. Say Hashtag yep. stand the stash. Stand the stash. In this house, we stand the stash. Austin Matthews. We stand forever. I love him. I think he's fantastic. Comes in the league, scores four goals in his first game. Like, please, who else is there? Try to top that, Jesse. Go ahead. I dare you. Ryan gets off. Oh, no, I, you are joking. I no, know you are trolling. You are so I, trolling. I like Ryan Getzloff. You, you are I'm just, trolling. Honestly, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think of – so I'm going not necessarily – skill I just he's so funny every time I've ever interviewed him he just makes me laugh and he's just the coolest dude so I just absolutely get. again I'm really struggling to think of a non-Minnesotan like I literally just ran through like 56 players and they were all Minnesotan so I was like mm, I don't have that is hard non-Minnesotan <laughs> is hard yeah yeah I just mean, because the NHL I mean the NHL is so filled with Minnesotans or some right. kind of tie to Minnesota where it's like I yeah, I will say when I was growing up, so I always have had a soft spot for goalies, yeah. and 
I don't think he's Minnesotan. Ryan Miller, he's not, he was not no, Minnesotan. He's was American. He? I loved him. I don't know why. I had like a super, super he's soft spot cool. for him, yeah. but I really liked him. I also thought he was like kind of cute a little bit. So I was like, oh, he's cute. He's a goalie. Love him. So when I was growing up, I, for some reason, I always liked him, but now it's, it's Austin Matthews until the day we die. So. Meh. Meh. What do you mean? Eh, Miss Ryan gets love. Okay. Oh, what's up? Gets. I like that's, him. He's that like, is a big just, fan. that's almost as offensive as you thinking Martin Skula is one of the better defenders in his <laughs> wild history. That's a close second. <laughs> Let's get him feisty. Let's get him rolling. That's what I do. That better um, be the last question because I can't take is, any more is, of this. That is. That is. That's last awesome. Stomach. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for all of your questions each and every week. We will be having this YouTube exclusive where we dive in, answer whatever questions you may have, whether they're hockey related, life related, career related. Uh, we will try to get to those each and every week. So be sure you subscribe. Also, be sure to check out this week's episode, which is now live on all mm-hmm. podcast streaming apps and our Talk North featured podcast partner. Um, that'll do it. Hope you guys have a great rest of the day. Stay a beautiful.